bride, kids, it's finally happening. You're going to have kids, church. You can go on this side if you want. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to go. All right, let's have fun. I'm coming with you. So, I'm just kidding. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is it okay to go sit in an inner tube today? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Well, um, uh, before we get into the word, uh, just in the way of update, because I know a lot of you have been believing and praying with me, um, I went to the doctor on Friday, and, uh, um, you know, I believe this is a testimony of Jesus, because <clears throat> Lisa's like, I, I don't think I'll go. She's upset with the last time <clears throat> as I went just to get the x-ray, and they ended up sending me into the doctor right away because uh, they said my lungs were both so bad. And uh, um, it took a while, but they got these breathing treatment medicines, you know, for the nebulizer. There's two in those. And then I'm doing a couple different inhalers. And, um, uh, and you know, and I know in the natural those help, you know, that uh, doing the nebulizer uh, with the two medicines in it four times a day and then doing the other two inhalers uh, are different, you know, uh, helpful. But she's like, you're, you're, you're doing better, so I'm not going to go. Well, I ended up being there over two hours and, you know, the doctor was listening and, you know, said, yeah, you think you're doing, you're making progress, doing better. Um, and, uh, but then getting more concerned and took, sent me in to an x-ray and said, well, basically your lungs are same. Um, there's still pneumonia in them and both of them uh, like they were. And so it's the glory of God that I've been able for the last uh, couple weeks or so to be able to be up here standing because I'm the in the natural light, again, I think the lungs, the, the medicine's helping uh, the airway, even though the lungs are full. And, uh, and she said the one Lung the tops really uh, got a bunch of stuff. And that was what got her focus at first. Then she went back and looked at the x ray again with the x ray technician. Said, yeah, they're basically the same. And, uh, and so I praise God for that, that I'm able to be up here and not on my back, um, you know, because that's kind of how it is when, when you got double pneumonia. Your both lungs are really full of junk. Um, but I'm going to, they're going to mail me another round of antibiotics and another round of steroids. I think that's number four for the steroids. And, and you know, so in the natural, that's her approach. But I'm believing God just to know that, that, <clears throat> you know, like my back, um, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm not going to believe my lungs stay, <clears throat> stay cruddy. Um, you know, I'm believing for the res restorative miracle there. And that, um, you know, thank God for the natural. I'll take the medicine when it comes. Um, you know, I got to go back in two weeks and do another x-ray. And, and you know, and she said she's going to send me to a uh, pulmonary doctor. Um, or, uh, if that still looks the way it's been looking for all these weeks. So, Believe God. That's why I share. I know people have been asking and they've been praying. So let's believe God for my lungs to uh, be clear in the next X-ray, or, or you know, at least look better. And um, and I need energy. I, I there's I got a lot of work I want to do out here. I'm ready to. Um, I'm ready to. You know, how many of you went back there or saw it on the screen? Is that pretty cool? That's and that's nice, but that's not God's best for our kids. They they need their own sanctuary, their own room, and I'm ready to gut that room and then remodel it, which will finish the first pass of this building and give them their own room, and then we'll do the second pass, some detail work. Um, but then, as God leads, I might cut a hole in the wall and extend that way and make them a bigger 
kids' room. We may build a youth room off this side, or we just may have to, you know, have finished this to the glory of God, sell it to someone else, and build a big new building somewhere else, you know, as God blesses. Um, I kind of have a feeling Jesus is going to come before we need to do that. But I believe we can fill this building up, fill that youth room up, fill that new children's room up, and let's occupy till he comes. Let's finish the, the assignment that he has for us and reach families in the heart of the Ozarks that need Jesus. Um, because we don't, we don't want anyone to face uh, what I think the world stage is being set for. Um, if you know Jesus Christ, I believe with all my heart, you'll be raptured before the tribulation, the great tribulation like the world has never seen. The world has known tribulation. I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about World War II now and are comparing some of the stuff going on to some of the things that happened prior to that. <clears throat> and, um, and that was bad. That was some tribulation on the earth, wasn't it? Great Depression, World War II coming out of that. And, um, but what's, what's coming in the future according to the Word of God uh, makes that look like a, 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 a holiday in, in a five-star resort. <clears throat> and so we're going to believe God. Yeah, you get to have kids' church today. Woohoo! Just find an inner tube and sit in it. Have fun. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> Pastor Lisa, when she's done her quick change, she's in a Hawaiian shirt right now. So, um, uh, you, you, one of you ought to go back and get a picture of her standing and teaching them in that Hawaiian shirt, you know, and the kids sitting in the inner tube. I think she's going to take some pictures because she's got her camera, but she won't take a picture of herself. So if one of you could get a picture of her doing that on this first day. So anyway, praise the Lord. I'm ready to see this building go. And uh, and anybody that wants to help, you know, on the... On the um, what do they call it on those remodel shows? Who watches those? Uh, uh, demolition. If we can do, uh, you know, some, you say, I, I'm not much of a carpenter or electrician. Um, you know, I can take care of all the electrical work and, and you know, and, and, and help, you know. If somebody holds stuff for me when I'm, when I'm doing some of the carpentry work, it really accelerates how fast things get done. You can imagine framing entire walls or hanging sheetrock. You know, carrying sheets of 12-foot sheetrock up the ladder and holding it up there. You know, I started learning some tricks of screwing things in the wall and setting the sheetrock, but some, I'd still have to carry sheets up, you know. But thank God in this room, Doug and, uh, well, Doug was helping do a lot of that sheet work, so we were able to Get it up, um, and because uh, these these were hefty, and um, and so uh, I'm ready. Anybody that's uh, ready to do it, um, you know, we're gonna have to get everything out of there. So just if you have muscles, you know, I mean, you don't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger, but if you have muscles that are able to carry a box, um, we gotta haul all the stuff out of that room. And um, and then just demo, just gut it, and then I'll do the electrical, and then we'll start doing all of the the uh, spray out the ceiling, do the walls, and then we're going to carpet. And uh, you know, I do have to frame a new wall in, going to tear out the things. But anyway, um, if you want to volunteer, I'm believing I'm going to be back in the saddle, not just being able to do the accounting, and you know, I mean, I'm studying and. Preparation for the word is obvious. I'm doing that, but bookkeeping and all of the, you know, other things I have to to do. I'm I'm handling all that, but um, I want to get back to work again and uh, and see this thing finished. I believe Jesus come back so soon. I don't want to leave this building unfinished. You say, well, why not? If it's going to be a tribulation, because there'll be people who will be left behind and they'll realize 
They're related to some of us. They've heard us say Jesus is coming. You need to be living your life for him. And some people are holding back. They're not giving their hearts to him. The world has a pull. The world has so many distractions. And, um, and should the trumpet sound and the, and the Lord come for the church and the rapture occurs and millions and millions of people disappear and they're just coincidentally all Christians. Our relatives, our friends that we've witnessed who will realize I missed it. You know where they're going to go? They're going to go run into church. You know, there's, there's, um, there's, there's going to be churches that are going to be filled. There'll be more people the day after the rapture that'll bust into this church and start worshiping than we have in here right now. And I, you know, I want to see these chairs filled before <laughs> the rapture, but that'll, that kind of stuff will happen. Yeah. Especially in the early days of it will go more and more underground as it goes further and further. And, um, but then in the millennium, everybody will be going to church. Everybody's going to be following the law of God for a thousand years. So there may be the, the church, if nobody come in here during those seven years, you know, uh, it'll be full in the millennium. Amen. So let's, let's just get excited, have a vision for it, finish this building, and, uh, and occupy. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> We're going to do our prophecy update um, in the last Sunday of this month, uh, which is what, two weeks, I think two Sundays from now. Um, but we may, we may increase those. I'll talk to all of you that have been coming to those um, if you're interested in them, because uh, a lot of people have questions about some of the stuff going on. and Is this Ezekiel 38? Is Vladimir Putin Gog? And, you know, and we can give you some scriptural uh, answers and a scriptural viewpoint of, um, of some of that. And, uh, uh, and so with as much happening, we may increase. There's, uh, there's, um, a church in Hawaii, he does one every Sunday. He's got two services. Got a prophecy update, and then they got the regular service after. A lot of people come in for the prophecy update, and they stay through for then the regular service after that. And uh, so who knows? We may end up having to finish that so we can open up a room, you know, for prophecy update. Get it going. All right. <clears throat> Are you ready to get into the Word this morning? Praise the Lord. Now, that's kind of some reference to the word, you know, occupy till he comes, do the work of the Lord. But we want to get into the message that God put on my heart to share with you today. Um, we just kind of had the Holy Ghost uh, uh, give us his own direction last week, and I believe it was good. Um, a theme of healing and, you know, and, and the power of that. That was, that was you know, that was special, and uh, we always want to be open to the flow of the Holy Ghost. But we started a series at the beginning of the year on the Word of God, and we wanted to start with the Word. We called it Begin with the Word. And then weather and COVID and pneumonia um, put us out of the pulpit, me out of the pulpit in particular, from doing that series until... Uh, just here recently, uh, last two weeks. And, um, and so I want to get back to the emphasis on the Word because that's how we're going to walk in victory. That's how we're going to navigate the times that we're living in. It's how we can stay in faith and confidence and in hope because God has exceeding precious promises and believers, no matter what the situation and circumstances that they find themselves in, no matter, you know, um, if you've gotten really focused on the three uh, red letters at the gas, or uh, letters, three red numbers at the gas station, and it's like, is it going to go higher? Is it going to go higher? You're watching the news 
and it says it's going to go higher. You know, that it's, it's where it is now. Um, I don't know what the price per barrel is, which has got us at this price, but they're saying on the news it could go to 200 a barrel. I don't think we're even at 150 yet. I don't know. And so they're saying 200, and I even heard one news broadcast say we could go to $400 a barrel, you know, if uh, things don't change. Well, people hear that, they see the, 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 the gas price, um, but we walk by faith. And where do we get faith? We get faith by hearing the Word of God, studying the Word of God, um, speaking the Word of God. It will produce faith so that we don't have to be moved by that. See, we serve Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. So if gas is $6 a gallon, he can provide. And he may provide it uh, in a different way. You know, um, he's so supernatural, and I'm not saying he's going to do it this way. I doubt if he would. Um, But I'm never going to say never to anything. (laughs) But we have a worldly saying, money doesn't grow on trees. He could cause money to grow on a tree. (laughs) There was a movie we saw um, a year or two ago, and it was a person ended up having a little money tree, money bush, and they hid it in the shed. And every day he'd harvest all this money off of it. You know, he freaked out. The bad thing is, is it was wife's inheritance and he saw the money, but, you know, he had, so he hid it even from her at first, you know, but it started paying for bills and stuff. But then the root of money, the, you know, the root of uh, uh, evil, you know, is the love of money, is the root of all evil. Not money itself, but the love of it. And he got so distracted by that, you know, there was a price. And, and, but it, it was a little money tree. And, you know, God could do that. So, I mean, I saw visibly something like that where just like, you know, this little thing. But, you know, if you had a bunch of 20s and 50, $100 bills uh, on a tree, I'd pay for the gas, wouldn't it? Even if the gas, instead of being $40 to fill up, is is $100 to fill up, (laughs) you know? God's a supernatural God. And the Word is what will keep us in faith. The Word will give us direction on how to live life during these times. And we can have a supernatural life. And so what I thought I would do is kind of go to the basics and hit how to handle the Word of God. Ethan, was there a graphic that I put in last week for how to handle the Word of God? I, I forgot to tell you that, or handling the Word of God. I forget what I called it. Um, I, I remember working on a graphic. I don't know if that's loaded from last week or not. If you find it, put it in there. But what we're going to do is go back to those basics to launch again, you know, the reminder to put us in remembrance of uh, some of that. And so um, let me just start with a couple basic Uh, key texts for this emphasis on the Word of God, His amazing Word, His supernatural book. 2 Timothy 3.16 All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's given by inspiration. The Greek word for inspiration means uh, inspiration is breath, is pneuma, is God-breathed. So when it says it's given by inspiration of God, it literally means God breathed. All scripture is God breathed. He spoke. When I speak, I'm breathing. You know, I might be breathing a little bit, you know, running low on on air a little bit, but I'm still breathing. I love that song that uh, every, that he's the air we breathe. That's one I'm going to sing in the weeks ahead. It's, it's like, yeah, that's perfect. Um, but it's God breathed. And then it says that the Word of God, the Scriptures, all of them, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. The Word of God is profitable, it's beneficial, it's helpful, it will improve your life. 
It's for the doctrine, your worldview, your belief system. It's profitable for that. It's important to know the Word of God. You know, um, just an example of the the value of the Word of God. Um, I grew up not super spiritual and religious. Grew up in a, uh, a, a mainline denominational church, the oldest of all of them, and <clears throat> not really uh, attending a lot. But you know, was aware. You grow up in the United States of America, you're going to get some religious viewpoints, even if you just watch all the classic movies that I grew up on: the Ten Commandments, the Robe, and you know the uh, uh, Jesus uh, movies. You know and all of that, uh, um, you know, great motion pictures, a lot of drama, but not a lot of biblical accuracy. They're based on the Bible. I've never seen that. You know, I know it's not new now, but I call it the new Noah movie. Um, they made a new Noah movie, and I saw some of the reviews. I'm not opposed to it particularly. Maybe I'll watch it one day. But you know, when I heard that, you know, they had these like rock creatures that spoke in it, and I'm thinking, not in the Bible, you know, and so uh, so I've never made it a high priority to watch. Um, might be interesting drama, but, you know, even one of the ones I love, Ten Commandments, um, they dramatized a lot, but I tell you what, if you just made it by what happened in the Bible, it would have been more dramatic <laughs> and accurate. Um, Because there was all kinds of stuff in there that wasn't biblical. (laughs) Even though it was a biblically based movie and inspires. And we get religious views. And with all of that, I just had a view that God the Father was an angry God just ready to judge us and send fire down and, and zap us. And that God the Son was merciful and compassionate, you know, and, and I almost pictured, you know, like the father ready to get him, and the, and the son's like, no, dad, no, 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 That's, you know, and he's like, you know, trying to protect us from the father. This, I, I don't know if you, any of you had a wrathful God view, and then God the son's the God of mercy, love, and all of that, but that was my view. Until I got born again and started reading the Word, Janie. And I realized by reading the Word of God that God the Father, we sang it today, you're a good, good Father. That God is good. That God, when it says in in the epistles of John, God is love. Not just talking about Jesus, who is God, but God the Father. See, I started to read the Word of God, and as I read it, because it's God breathed, it got into me. See, I knew the most translated piece of literature in the history of our world, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Everybody help me. Whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and you know, and, and uh, I knew that verse, but then I started to read it, and I would speak it, meditate on it. For God the love of the world that he gave his son. Oh, wait a minute. See, the breath of God. I was hearing the spirit of God. Was, you know, it's alive. It's spiritual. And revelation began. God the Father so loved the world that he the Father gave his the Father's only son, Jesus. And that whoever believes in him, Jesus, would not perish, but have everlasting life. That said, the Father loved us. He wasn't trying to get us, and Jesus was, he came trying to hold back the wrath of God. He came to fulfill the love of God 
the will of God. As John says, God is love. Isn't that extraordinary? As a matter of fact, um, Jesus said, because we think of Jesus that way, I started reading, he said things like this. This isn't in the notes, boys. Uh, uh, Ethan, we got... Oh, Sandra's back there helping us. Hey, boys, we got one, one girl and one boy back there. And so Jesus answered, uh, just as John 5, 19, just for the note takers. Don't forget, we got those, those composition books. Anybody that wants to get one, you can just give a dollar. That's all that I paid for them. And uh, just for your convenience, you know, you can get one of those and, um, and, and take some of these notes because times like this where I say something that's not going to appear. But in John uh, 5, 19, it, Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, whatever the Father does, then the Son, uh, then the Son, what does it say? I've just got it up in a reference. Whatever he does, the Son also does in a like manner. Jesus said in uh, John 5.30, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. So it's not Jesus holding back the wrath of God. Let me give you one more, John 8.28. Then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak. What? The things that my Father taught me. Jesus didn't say or do anything but what the Father said and did. He's the express image of The Father of God, because God is perfect in his unity. There's three persons in the Godhead, and yet he's perfect. And his nature, God, you know, when you say God is love, the Father is love, the Son is love, the Holy Spirit is love. They're in perfect unity. Their nature of God is is the same. You don't have a wrathful, angry Father, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jesus trying to hold us back. And, you know, I mean, you almost picture like Zeus with the lightning bolts and stuff, you know. And that's not the Bible at all, is it? Is that just eye-opening to you? You'll see once you, once you get that, and it comes by reading the Word, that's for doctrine what I believe what I build my life on, my worldview, the, the, the faith that I follow. That once I got that correct, that the Father loves, that God in all of his wholeness loves more than I can even comprehend. It changed my life. See, then I was able to just walk in confidence and victory every time you know, I would miss the mark. We talked about that on Wednesday night, that we will miss the mark. We will sin. Um, you know, uh, having been saved, we're born again, we're given his righteousness, but we still sin. You know, back to the epistles of John. You know, And if any of us sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. And, and he'll... He'll plead our cause as our defense attorney in the sense of uh, saying, you know, not guilty. He's one plucked from the fire. But it was, it's not the Father who's trying to bring the judgment and condemnation. It's the prosecuting attorney, Satan. And so we told everybody Ezekiel, you know, chapter, uh, uh, I mean, Zechariah chapter 3. Read that and you'll see it. Jesus paid the price, but that was the Father's will. Remember when Jesus said, Lord, in the the prayer in in the Garden of Gethsemane before he experienced the Passion, before they came out to that garden and arrested him and began the hours of suffering that he did for us? He 
said, Lord, if there's any way for this cup to pass, if there's any way, let it, let it happen. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And it was the will of the Father. He made the plan with the Son to come do what he did. That changed my life because now I can walk. You know, Satan would say, oh, you've sinned, you've blown it, and I, and I just feel like a worm. And I just feel like I can't pursue God. I can't grow in the Lord. Because I was just sin, aware, just, you know, the devil pointing out my sin, my shortcomings, my failures, how unholy, how ungodlike I was. As baby Christians, we were more unholy than ever. But how many of you know, as we, as we walk and we learn the will of God by studying the word, you know, we, it's revealed to us. We learn what his will is. Sometimes we get reproof or correction or, you know, just simply instructions in right living. Sometimes it comes as a rebuke. You know, you ought not to be doing that as a child of God. That's, that's just not, not, not God's best for you. That's not God's will. And somebody gives you in love a rebuke, a correction, and, and it, it's a course correction. Not a condemnation, but a course correction. And they help you in your journey. And it's profitable for that. For instruction in righteousness. It's like, okay, I'm safe. But what do I do? Thank God for people who disciple and help me along the way. <laughs> Not in this alone. That's why the church is so vital and so important. That's the benefit of the word. Somebody who knows the word, who's walked in that revelation, who's been able to, um, in time and experience, do that and to help someone else along the way. We don't all have to just go without any direction. The word is direction. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. How many of you know the word is alive? And how many of you know the word is powerful? It's different than any other book in all of the world, any other religious text, it is alive. Why? Because it's the breath of God. It still speaks to us. How many of you know I'm telling the truth? Anybody that spent any time in the Word, how many of you know? It just speak, it's like God speaking to you. And a secret to that, not complicated, I'm just kind of getting ahead of some of these basic principles, but we'll just flow with the Holy Ghost. I'm not in a rush on this. Just open your spirit. Be, be, Lord, I just want to receive whatever you have for, for me. Uh, whatever you want to say to me, I just I receive it now. Okay. And then just start to read. And when you open your spirit like that, you become, you know, it's the picture it, just in the natural. Like when we worship, part of what we do this, you know, some people say, well, when we raise our hands in worship, you know, it's... I surrender. Well, that's figuratively, that's true, right? You know, put up your hands means I surrender. Or if, if there's a battle and you're going to surrender to the enemy, what do you do? You drop your weapon, you put your hands up, and you walk out there and hope, hope that they'll, you know, not shoot you, and you can just say, I surrender. I give in. There are people who have been doing that in some of this conflict overseas. They've had some of that happen. A lot of that happened in the conflict you know, in the, especially the first Gulf War, a lot of Iraq, Iraqi uh, soldiers just immediately threw up their hands and r run to the American troops and surrendered in, in uh, the first Gulf War in Operation Desert Storm. It was uh, something. And so there's that aspect. But see, I, I, there's another picture, and it's equally as true, is I'm like, this is like a cup. Just fill me up, Lord. And so we, we're just receiving of his spirit. And, and he pours himself in. And, uh, and so it's alive. It speaks to us. And, uh, and, and it's powerful. The word of God has power to change our life because you, couldn't, you can't be saved apart from faith. For by grace you are saved through faith. 
Ephesians chapter 2, 8, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, Ephesians 2, 9. It's not about us being religious. That's kind of what I thought growing up. You just got to do all the works, be so good, and that if you do more good than bad, the scale will, will you know, come out on your side and, and, and St. Peter will say, okay, <laughs> come on in. In my case, he might have said, all right, you just barely made it, but come on in. No, nothing like that at all. How do I know? Because I've read the Word of God. The Bible revealed to me that it's by God's grace, we talked about that Wednesday, that we're saved through faith. And, and then Hebrews tells us, you know, um, that apart from faith, you can't please God. So if I'm going to get saved, you know, I've got to be pleasing the Lord. But then Romans chapter 10 tells me that, that I get faith by hearing the Word of God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God, by having God's Word, hearing His voice, having this book, which is alive, the breath of God, speak into me, be His breath, I take it in. And revelation comes. And I realize, not with a mental assent that he's God, but with a something within my spirit, man. He says, he is God. Remember when the centurion looked up? I mean, this is how real, I mean, it's part of my daily reading. I've just read the crucifixion and now the resurrection today. But, um, but, when Jesus died and, 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 you know, there was for three hours, the sun was dark, the clouds filled in, the, in the, and it, it was like it was a night, but it was the middle of the day. Earthquake occurs, all this is going on. Jesus is saying, for, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. And then it is finished in your hands, I commend my spirit. And the centurion who, who, was in, was killed Jesus. Looked up and saw Jesus having died and having taken all that in, he said, surely this is the Son of God. Became alive to him. And that's what happens to us. Now, we, we weren't there to see it, but we can read that story and the breath of God and it will become alive to us. What Jesus did and faith comes. He did that for me. And when the devil tries to say, oh, you're, you, you blew it, you've done this, you say, God loved me so much he did that. His blood is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. I am not guilty. Because he declared me innocent. Not that I didn't do it, but he said, you're acquitted. I declare you not guilty. The word of God that comes alive gives us that. Do you see how valuable the word is? How precious it is? That was just our, uh, I didn't even finish that. It's living and powerful. It can cause people to be born again. And it can you can speak the word, meditate on the word, and even though in the natural, the x-rays show your lungs to be full of pneumonia, you know, um, the same as it was when, you know, you, you were really struggling to breathe, you could get up and you can be breathing and move around and help a little bit. You know, that was kind to put that in the announcements, thanks to Jane and Pastor Ray. Lisa and Jane did. But, but I was out here and did some, you know, help make that mountain. And uh, I sat in a chair and filled up inner tubes. <laughs> Not really hard. So they were gracious to me. But, um, but to even be out there and do that, and to be up here and be teaching, and not, because I, if I would try to breathe and, you know, talk, if I tried to talk, which is breathing, exhaling, I would have massive coughing 
attack. And so for weeks, I couldn't really even talk, right? I mean, if I just started to say much of anything, I just have a bad cough as it is. And so the word can do that. Because the children needed their, their teacher back. They needed to be having instruction on their level and relating to them. And <clears throat> I'm not the cat's meow or the best thing since sliced bread, but I am your pastor that God called to be here. And you need me to be in this pulpit and teaching you the word of God. And I'm like, God, I need to be back in that pulpit. I want to do that remodel work. But I need to be back in the pulpit. I've just been standing on the word and believing the promises of God. And so I was surprised when at first, you know, I just thought, you know, I'm going to do, I'm doing better and all. But then she said, get the x-ray. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of stuff was going on. Got these powerful shots that hurt like the dickens. Um, and then the nurse, when they tell you this, these two shots are really going to hurt. Um, yeah, believe them if they tell you that. Because she's like, and this one, I got to do one down here and I got to do one up here. And she's like, I know this hurts, but it's got to go really slow because it's hard to push it in. And, and it's like, so the pain is like, you know, at first it's like, wow, she wasn't lying. And she just keeps going. It's like, oh man. And then the arm, you know, it's like, don't worry, that's going to hurt you for days, but this one will just hurt for a little while. You know, um, so thank God for some stuff in the natural, but I was already feeling better. It's just that that was the result of her looking back at x-rays. And I, I just know that's God. Because I was already doing two of those inhalers. They added the breathing treatments, and I, I, don't, dis, I don't discount it. I know it's helpful. And I'm faithful to take those. It's a benefit, and it's a gift of man's ability to learn some things. But I know it's the power of the word that I believe in that has me in this pulpit preaching this message today. And to hear my voice, um, it's the same as it was last time, has more depth to it than when I'm not in this pulpit. And that's faith. And that's the, that's the word is powerful. Do you get it? It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. There are things that we may think and we've come to believe, but the word can cut through religious tradition. It can cut through confusion. How many of you have been reading some stuff in the Bible? Because we've been, a lot of us have really taken to heart. I really strongly encourage people to get in a Bible reading program and I think probably more than half of us, maybe the vast majority of us, are reading a Bible plan, are reading the Bible through in a year. And some of us are doing the victory, I think they're all back there on the table, the victory Bible reading plan, which is, you know, it's, it's, it can be, you know, there's at least four, four chapters of the Bible a day happening, <laughs> you know, and... Uh, and, it, and, it, and yet it's so alive and so rich. But see, it, 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 the word, you know, you'll read it, but the, the God's ability to take that and cut through our misconceptions and be able to see some things, and then God gives by revelation of meditating on, we're going to get into those principles, meditating on the word, and he can cut through that confusion, that religious tradition. And bring clarity. And the word itself gives you an answer to, like, what, as we're reading. I don't quite understand that. You know, a, a preacher one time said, if you don't get something, take it. And uh, these are plugged in. Um, but just take that and uh, put it on a shelf. Say, Lord, I don't quite understand and just, just put it on the shelf and say, give me wisdom, help me understand. And then sit on the shelf. And then, you know, as you meditate and you're trying, you just, you're not getting it. It may not be for you at that moment to get it. But you say, Lord, I, I, I want wisdom. I want to understand. 
What are you trying to say? Show me. It may be the next day. It may be the next week. It may be the next month. It may be the next year. That is, you're in the Word, or you're hearing a sermon. There it is. And the wisdom comes. The revelation comes. How many of you know I'm telling the truth? Is this not any of us that have lived for God any length of time and spent time in the Word? That's the qualifier. You know how many people that have prayed the prayer, Lord, come into my life, I'll make you Lord of my life. They don't go to church. They're not reading the Word of God. They're all over Facebook. I'm just spiritual. I don't need that. And you look at the fruit of their life, and it's like, you really believe some weird stuff. <laughs> you know, you really are practicing a lifestyle that's not the lifestyle that God's teaching us in the Word. I know Tony and Danielle are reading numbers. And God's pretty detailed about the offerings, the sacrifice, and how you do it, and all that. See, God's really detailed. So, so godly living, holy living, it's not just wing it. Just, just kind of float around in life, and the Lord will do it. That's foolishness. I had a woman one time. Now, she really spent a lot of time doing it, but you can get confusion just from something. She's like, I'm a member of this ministry. I'm a partner of this ministry. I'm a partner of this ministry. She opened her billfold, pulled her billfold out of her purse. Opened up. You know how some, some moms have like 500 pictures of their kids, their family in there? You open it up, and she opened it up, and brrr, <laughs> It come out, and it was all the partner cards where she was partner with this ministry. And I and I and I'm looking at him. It's like he preaches the exact opposite of what he preaches. And man, like, that guy is off the wall there, and and you know, and, but but was feeding on all this. And it's like, you know, when I observed her, I'm not trying to be mean or judgmental. I'm just I'm not naming her name or even where she lived. But I can tell you. That when I observed her life, when I talked to her, if I had to give one word to describe her, it would be confusion. Just to hear all the stuff, it's like there was just such confusion. There was not clarity. There's not solid, you know, understanding. And I got it when she opened that up and. And all the stuff. I hope this is helpful to you. <clears throat> so, so it can pierce between confusion. It can cause you, when you read the word, and you hear something that's contrary to the word, say, oh, that's, that's not. the first church after I was born again that I went to, and I believe God you know, had put me there because they study the word like no, no other church, no other people I've ever known. I was studying the word up to 10 and 12 hours a day. I devoured the Bible. I color-coded with 16 different combinations of colors. And i got to tell you, when I do the Bible reading plan, I'm color-coding and recolor-coding, you know, as I'm reading it in, in just this. And I can only do two colors per verse. I can do a highlight and an underline. But in my... In, in that day, I, somebody discipling me taught me a color code, and, and I added about four or five colors to it, topics, and said, when, when you have um, something happened, a fact, and you have it happened because of a faith, well, Jesus said, you're healed because of your faith. You're whole because, because you believed. You're whole. According to your faith, it has done, been done to you. So when you have a fact, something that happened as a result of believing, orange with brown brackets, combining those two colors, becoming one thing, became a miracle. That's a miracle. Now, when there's 
you know, the super... Anyway, I'm not going to get into the color code. But it takes time to do that. And when you're doing more than... I, I only do about um, eight topics or so. I was guessing maybe 10. But I had 16. And again, some of those scriptures had double... Because I was manually doing it in a Bible... And I would do brackets and I would do lines under there. So I could have like five or six different combinations because some verses are like that. They have more, if you know what I mean, like if you color code in, in like two, it's like all the time. It's like I need more colors, but I can't electronically. And so it takes time. But I, I, I read through and color coded an entire Bible in, in months in detail. And, and, you know, I have not my first one, but I have another one that I did, my first Thompson Chain Reference Bible that's fallen apart, so it's just kind of an heirloom in there. So I can't use it anymore. Actually, I actually have the Thompson in here that I can refer to. And, uh, and as I read, I started to learn things that I, that I was being taught and then I would hear him teach, and it's like, uh, that's not accurate. And I had all the respect in the world, and it's like where I, where I got planted, and, and, I, and I learned to study the Word. I learned some tools to study the Bible. They gave me a dictionary. They gave me a Bible concordance, a couple members who were discipling me. Um, one gave me the concordance and the dictionary. The other gave me a study Bible, and, and they're helping me. Let's just pray in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, uh, hallelujah, Linda, in the name of Jesus, Kulena Shiputola Maha, thank you, Father, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, for healing from seizures, thank you that these are so rare, it's not happening much, but Lord, we thank you, no more seizure, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, wholeness. Wholeness in Jesus' name. Wholeness in Jesus' name. Take her glasses off over. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to let them pray. Um, and do things in the natural here. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, um, just to take the moment in the message, I'll edit it out for our, our uh, website sermon, but um, she was having massive seizures one after another, and uh, um, the Lord is really... This this doesn't happen often. It's it's hardly happening at all now, and they're a lot more minor. So God's doing an amazing work. But thank thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, Hallelujah. Okay, thank you Lord, thank you Jesus. And it's because we believe the Word that we're seeing that, and uh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> Normally, I'm going to be the one in there, but I'm going to...
and it can it can bring clarity for you. Isn't that good? So next week I'm going to do the basics. You know that I've said, uh, you know um, how to handle the Word of God, and I'm just going to give you a heads up. Um, read it, hear it, believe it, meditate on it, study it, confess it, pray it, share it, love and cherish it. These are just a few basics, not all of them. But if we do those things, the word will work for us. I'm going to wrap it up for now so that I can, because I know it's a bit distracting to you, but I want to finish the word, the message uh, for, for those that are watching and listening. They don't even know what's going on. And uh, we just have a little medical situation that's, that's well in hand, under control. And, uh, and, um, and so we wanted to finish that out. And uh, we'll get into the rest of it next week. And we can let you go and I can focus on my granddaughter. All right, let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for the message that's came forth. Just a reminder from two scriptures of the fact that this word is alive, it's powerful, it is, it is the breath of God, it's your voice speaking to us, it is sharper than any two-edged sword, that it can bring clarity to our lives, that it's profitable for doctrine, Lord, what we believe, for reproof and correction, it's, it's profitable for instruction and in how to live righteously, right living, we thank you for the powerful, anointed, spiritual word of God. And Lord, we thank you that this word that's went forth is producing results, including the healing power of God going into this body right now in Jesus' name. It's enabling me to stand here and proclaim your word from this pulpit today. That for the glory of God that I'm breathing, Lord, even though the natural says I shouldn't be able to based on, on the previous exams. I just thank you, God, that it is alive, it is powerful, and it is changing people's lives. For those of us that are believers, it's enabling us to live and grow in faith. And we're going from faith to faith, from one level of faith to another, from revelation that is getting deeper and impacting our life, but it's also powerful to save souls. And that we can share this word and we can see our family, our co-workers, our friends, our neighbors and strangers um, get born again, saved by hearing the word of God that we share. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah.